Good morning. Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias Antioch and Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is June 2nd, 2020, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 21, verses 26 through 32. In those days, Paul took them then, and the next day he purified himself with them and went into the temple to give notice when the days of purification would be fulfilled and the offering presented for every one of them. When the seven days were almost completed, the Jews from Asia, who had seen him in the temple, stirred up all the crowd and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man who is teaching men everywhere against the people and the law and this place. Moreover, he brought Greeks into the temple, and he has defiled this holy place. For they had previously seen Trophimus the, the Ephesian with him in the city, and they supposed that Paul had brought him into the temple. Then all the city was aroused, and the people ran together. They seized Paul and dragged him out of the temple, and at once the gates were shut. And as they were trying to kill him, word came to the tribune of the cohort that all Jerusalem was in confusion. He at once took soldiers and centurions and ran down to them, and when they saw the tribune and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. The Gospel reading today is from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 16, verses 2 through 13. The Lord said to his disciples, The hour is coming, when whoever kills you will think that he is offering service to God, and they will do this because they have not known the Father, nor me. But I have said these things to you, that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convince the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you will see me no more concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say to you, but cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. This morning's gospel has a couple of troubling things in it, I think, for us. The first one, and the most profound perhaps, is that very first sentence. The Lord said to his disciples, The hour is coming when whoever kills you will think that he is offering service to God. That is very troubling, because there are many who will be deceived. And so, when they do this, you know, we see examples of this in the Acts of the Apostles this morning. When we hear the account of how Paul was dragged out of the temple at that point, and they were trying to kill him, they believed that they were offering service to God. But it has to do with the fact that they do not know Christ, nor that they knew, know the Father. If they had known both... They wouldn't have done that, but instead would have asked him to inform them and instruct them in the ways that lead to life everlasting. We may find similar things in our own time. It is not necessarily going to be easy to be a faithful person in a time like today. And by faithful, I mean those who do worship the living God, those who do believe in him and are willing to do the works that he calls us to do. Because oftentimes when we do those things, we are ridiculed or mocked by the world around us. And Christ actually addresses that also in this morning's gospel. He talks about how the Holy Spirit will come. And the Holy Spirit will give them the spirit and everything that is necessary. The spirit of truth, he calls it. And he says that it will guide you into all the truth. And then Right before that, he talks about how the Spirit will come and convince or convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. And the sin because they do not believe in the, in the Son, um, because in the Son there is life. And without the Son, there is no life. And that's an important thing for us to remember. Concerning righteousness, because he goes to the Father and he will not be seen anymore, He is righteous because he does the Father's will in all things. He will go to the Father because he has completed the work that the Father has sent him to do. He will go to the Father honored and 
celebrated and deeply respected because the work that he did, he did in selfless love, love for the Father, but also love for us. His willingness to ascend the cross, his willingness to die for us, an innocent man, completely innocent, beyond all potential of sin, there on the cross for us. Obviously, there is nothing more righteous than that. And concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. Now, in this case, of course, the ruler of this world is the prince of darkness. And he is judged because he has no love for the father. He has no love for the son. He has no love for us. He has nothing except this bitterness and this desire to punish the father by tormenting the son and this desire to mess with us not because he wants us to follow him he doesn't care he just wants us to be distracted because there's nothing worse than taking what is good of God's creation and despoiling it there's nothing worse than taking a person made in the image of God and turning them into a child of hell there's nothing worse than that and so that's all his goal is. His goal is to take what is good and despoil it. He is the true despoiler. Because he used to be the most beautiful of the angels. But now he's the most grotesque of those who don't follow God. And that's an interesting little warning to us. The superlatives, they, they cancel each other out. We must be careful in our pursuits of excellence and everything else that we don't amplify the vices that are the, the kinsfolk of our virtues. So this morning, we just take the time and we contemplate this nature of living a Christian life and what it means to live out that life faithfully. And the fact, you know, he says even um, that he didn't tell these things to the disciples earlier because he was with them. He was a protector. But now he's telling them that you're going to be exposed. You're going to be vulnerable. Things are not going to go your way. You'll be tormented. People will try to kill you. People will revile you. They'll kick you out of their synagogues. All of those things are going to happen. And yet, we are re reassured that the Holy Spirit is with them and with us. And that's very comforting. Christ promises us that we will never be left desolate. And that is the hope that we hold on to in times of joy, and also in times of sorrow. May God bless you and keep you. May his light constantly shine upon you, and may he grant you his peace. I pray that you have a blessed day, and God willing, we will meet again tomorrow. God bless you.